Hi there, Malcolm here with my 116th booktube video and today I'll be bringing you my November wrap up and December TBR. A lot of books to get through, so let's get cracking. First up, I finished On Basilisk Station by David Webber. This is book one of the Honor Harrington series. Mostly read this back in October. Literally just finished it off on the 1st of November. This is a reread, the only one I've read of this series. I want to plow on and get through this series and see what I think of it, but it's been a long time ago since I last read it, so read this one again, ready to go on for the rest. The story follows Commander Honor Harrington as she takes command of her first big ship, where through a series of occurrences entirely out of her control, she finds herself and a ship detailed at some backwater station, the Station Basilisk. It's the job nobody wants, it's the job that goes to the unpopular officers. However, she makes the best out of the situation and ends up uncovering a whole bunch of things that are going on over there. Really nicely written, a good all round a feel good book. One could argue there's not much depth to it, but there are plenty of good scenes in here. And for what it is, it is hugely uplifting. Well, I would say booktastic. After that, I then read Aliens No Exit by B.K. Evanson. I have done an individual review for this one, so I'll leave a link to that below. So go and check that out if you want to see what I thought of this. And after that, I then read Star Wars Legacy Storms. I continue to work my way through my Star Wars graphic novel and comic collection. I've gone through chronologically. I'm near the end now with the Legacy, following Cade Skywalker, great-great-grandchild of Luke Skywalker. As a Sith, they're up to no good again, and he finds himself in the middle of all sorts of things going on. This particular volume is really exciting, a lot going on in this, a lot of very complex issues. I can't really reveal too much because of spoilers, but basically Cade doesn't want to be a Jedi, he doesn't want to be a Sith, he just wants to be Cade, and even that might be too much for the galaxy. Gorgeously illustrated. I've read this as comics, but here it is in the trade paperback edition, had I managed to get hold of a copy, which I didn't. Basically the same, but without the adverts. Booktastic. And after that, I then read Just One Damn Thing After Another by Jodie Taylor. This is book one of the Chronicles of St. Mary's. My wife's pretty much read everything in this series and kept going on and on about me reading it. In the end, she got me to read book one to her as our nightly reading. So I did. I think we're planning on doing a joint video to review this book. So I'll leave a link when it happens in the comment section down below, hoping to film that this week. And after that, I then read Star Wars Legacy Tatooine. This next volume features heavily on the planet of Tatooine, surprisingly enough, where some bounty hunters are trying to hunt down Cade Skywalker. And there's a big secret about the one that does catch up with him, although he doesn't know it, she doesn't know it, and I won't spoil it. But if you know your Star Wars, then it's probably pretty predictable. But really good nonetheless. Again, wonderfully illustrated. Not as intense or exciting as the previous volume, so I'm only going to say buy it for this one instead of Booktastic. But still really, really good and... I'd dearly love to have the whole lot as a nice graphic novel collection. And after that, I then read This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti. This is book one of the Darkness Duology. And it follows the inhabitants of the town of Ashton, who are in a spiritual battle. Demons and angels are fighting over their souls. And in particular, we follow Marshall Hogan, who's the new pastor of a little church, and Hank Bush, an unbeliever newspaper editor who's just moved in from the big city, who gets wind of some conspiracy going on and is trying to investigate but finds that he's dealing with powers beyond his understanding. I really enjoyed this one. It's a little bit dated, it's very much of its time. This was first published in the 1980s, but still really compelling reading. I did like the balance between what was going on in the physical plane and the spiritual plane, side by side. A really clever balance. And I also like that the resolutions came about not by just, oh, let's go and pray, and it's all nice now. There were actual real conflicts confronted. And yes, prayer happened. But it wasn't isolated. There was actions and conscious decision making going on as well. Really clever stuff. Looking forward to reading the follow up. Bye. And after that, I then read Safari Adventure by Willard Price to my older son. I think it's book eight of the series now. As young Hal and Roger Hunt, animal collectors for their father's zoo, are still in Africa and still not collecting animals. In this book, they spend their time helping a park ranger fighting off the poachers. And the poachers themselves are led by the notorious Blackbeard. And in the way of these books, the bad guy is really obvious from almost the start. And of course, nobody can see that he's the bad guy. But we're not here for the plot necessarily. We're here for the locations because we know that Willow Price went to and saw a lot of the things he wrote about, if not all of it. So we get to find out more about animals, more about the locations, particularly back in the day when this was written, before we wiped them all out. I enjoyed reading this when I was growing up. I'd say it's worth reading now. And just be aware that, again, attitudes have changed somewhat since this was written. So if this was written today, a lot of the things in here would have been written slightly differently, or a lot differently. But my older son has enjoyed the series, and we're moving on to the next book. 
And then finally, I then read 21st Century Dead, a collection of 19 short stories. It isn't a collection of zombie stories, it's a collection of The Walking Dead stories. Not as in the TV show or comic book of The Walking Dead, but on the theme of being dead and yet still walking. A lot of the stories do feature zombies in their traditional brain-eating, bashing down the door, hordes of them and you've got to try and survive. But I was really impressed that there weren't too many stories of just surviving in the zombie apocalypse. And those that were had an interesting twist. I mean, there's one that's quite haunting, featuring a young boy who's suffering from cancer. Well, pretty much dying from cancer, I should say. And when the zombies come, they ignore him because he's not worth it, as it were. There's more going on rather than just that, but it was quite a haunting story, that one kind of stuck with me. And there were also variations on the zombie theme. Some were more docile and just wandering around, being pests more than anything else. Others were more voracious and hunting. One was a very clever twist on afterwards. A zombie cure has, has been found and one of the zombie victims now reverted back to being human again and dealing with the consequences of what she did while she was a zombie. Very clever story, that one. I'm not going to go into each one. I've done a short write-up on each of the short stories, which I've got going into my blog. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. I've already done a couple of lines per story. I haven't gone overboard. But, you know, just some quick thoughts on them. But on the whole, mostly all good. There's one I didn't like much at all, The Drop. I didn't really understand it, and I didn't care enough to try and work it out further. Um, it was a bit disappointing. But 1 out of 19, I don't think it's too bad at all. On the whole, it's a book that is worth buying. So those are the books I've read. Now onto the books I'm going to read, I hope. For the month of December, I'm going to stick to Star Wars. I have a huge Star Wars book collection to get through and it's taking forever. I'm really enjoying it, but uh, I'm going to use the month of December to try and fast forward my progress. So first up, I'm reading The Last Jedi by Michael Reeves and Mayor Catherine Bonoff. I did want to read this last month, but I just didn't get around to it. This is book four in the Coruscant Knight series, or rather the Coruscant Knight trilogy, and then this is the follow-on to that. Following Jedi Jax Pavan after Order 66, where the spark of the rebellion is on Coruscant, and he's going to try and get the head guy out of there to a safe place, and of course you know he's going to get hunted down. I've just started it, they're on the way, so far so good. Some great characters in this story, particularly like the droid I-5, who's been a recurring character in the um, Star Wars books. Now, good stuff so far. And when I finish that, I'll then move on to Tyrant's Test by Michael P. Kuby McDowell. This is book two of the Black Fleet Crisis. During the summer holidays, I read book one. I was going to read the entire Black Fleet Crisis trilogy, but book one was so drab and dull that it took me all of the holiday to just read the one. So I'm going to go into this one with some trepidation. I'm really hoping it's going to pick up, but as the characterizations of Han, Leia, Luke, Lando were terrible in book one, I'm uh, hoping it's going to be better, but... Yeah. And then after I've read that, I'll then move on to Shield of Lies, book three of the trilogy. Anyway, so far I've been reading all my Star Wars novels chronologically, starting with books covering events thousands of years before the original story, A New Hope. So I've gone through all the Old Republic, all the Rebellion, and are now pushing forward towards the new Jedi Order, which is coming up soon. However, I didn't have all the books in the series when I went through it, so subsequently having passed points in the timeline, I've managed to acquire books I didn't have, or other books have been written and added to the timeline. So I have Honour Among Thieves by James S. A. Corey, and Scandals by Timothy Zahn. I do have more, but I figured I'd only get through these two. So I'll either read these after I've read The Black Freak Crisis, but depending on how book two goes, I might read one between book two and book three, just to try and find something a bit better to read. I do want to read them, that's the thing. And then once I've finished the third book, I'll either read the other one, or I'll press on to The New Rebellion by Christian Catherine Rush, which is the first Star Wars book I've ever read. I borrowed it from the library, and got hooked on Star Wars books ever since then. So this will be the first time I've reread it since then. I remember this one being quite good, so looking forward to that. Quite a thick book, so whether I get through all these books or not during this month, I don't know. And I can say these two are made to spur to the Black Feet Crisis, or I may read these after I've read The New Rebellion, depending on how I get on. Anyway, that's the plan. It kind of made sense at the time. I think that was a complete waffle when I read the books that you just now, but I'm not changing that. And in the unlikely event I do manage to read all that in the month of December, then I'll just pick up the next Star Wars book, whatever that is. Of course, during all that, I'll continue reading my Star Wars graphic novels or comics. So I'm still playing on with the Legacy series. I'm on the monster titled Volume. This is the third comic in the graphic novel collection of five comics. 
So I'm nearly halfway through. Really, really good stuff. If I finish this one, I'll then move on to the next one and so on. And I'm still reading The Walking Dead, The Fall of the Governor, Part 1 by Robert Kirkman and Jay Ponan Singer while boiling the kettle. I'm about that far into it now. And of course, I read to everybody else in the household. So to my boys, I'm still reading The Shepherd's Crown by Terry Pratchett, the final Discworld book featuring Tiffany Aching. Really good. To my youngest, I'm still reading The Last Sky Pirate by Paul Stewart, illustrated by Chris Riddle. That's part of the Edge Chronicles and the Rook sequence. Well over halfway on that now. And having finished reading Safari Adventure to my older son, I'm now reading the next book in the series, Lion Adventure by Willard Price. So the boys are still in Africa and there's a man-eating lion on the loose and they're on the hunt for that man-eating lion. And to my wife, I'm now reading The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. This is the exclusive Waterstones edition. It includes exclusive bonus content. Not quite sure what. It's an urban fantasy. It's a typical urban fantasy trope. A young lady in 1983's London finds herself in a situation where there are more weird things going on than she's expecting. Yes, there's a whole other world underneath the world that we know. Blah, blah, blah. And she's descended from something or other. Blah, 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 blah. We're nearly halfway through it. Kind of waiting for something to happen and be different. It's all right. It's very readable. Blah, blah, blah. But I must mention something we are going to bring up in our review of it, and that is the word flashlight. Brought us straight out of the story. This is 1983 London, England. We still don't use the word flashlight in this country. We certainly didn't use it back in 1983. Very disappointed with that, particularly as other uses of terms such as lift were correctly used. But flashlight, you know, X-Files hasn't even happened yet. We don't know what a flashlight is at this point. Anyway, I have to say that. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. And of course, if you'd like to share with me any books that you've read or are planning to read, then leave a link or a list in the comment section down below and I'll go and check those out. And when reading a book, have you ever come across a word that is just so jumped out of the page in terms of how wrong it is? I don't necessarily mean offensive words, just, just words that do not belong in that setting. Then let me know. We have had an interesting discussion on Twitter about the use of flashlight versus torch, and there was a unanimous agreement that it should have been torch. But I'd love to know your encounters with such words. As usual, if you have nothing nice to say, then please keep it to yourself. And until next time, see you later.